It's Tuesday the 5th of June 2018. We're here today at uh, Derbyshire County Cricket Club. My name is David Jenkins and today we're talking about umpiring. And I'm very pleased to have uh, three guests today. I'm Annette Owen. I umpired for 25 years before I retired in 2010 and I now observe other umpires to help them improve. And I'm John Salisbury and I've been umpiring adult cricket since 1972 on a regular basis. And my name's Adam Hitchcock, uh, I've been umpiring for 11 years, uh, recently become the Education Officer in Derbyshire. Right, thank you very much and, and welcome. Um, John, can I start with you? Uh, clearly a huge amount of experience as an umpire and um, I think you've also developed other roles within umpiring as you've gone along. Yes, um, I um, became the secretary of, of what was the Association of Cricket Umpires and Scorers Derbyshire branch um, at the inception of the branch in the early 80s. But I actually predate that because uh, the Umpires Association in Derbyshire started in 1950 at, um, at a meeting at the Mechanics Institute on the Strand. Um, there was created an association of umpires for the county um, and I became the secretary of uh, that organisation in 1979 which morphed into the ACUNS branch in about 1981-82 there was a special sort of ceremony in the a ACSU stands for uh, uh, Association of Cricket Umpires and Scorers right. as was at the time and um, there was a special meeting um, in the old grandstand um, uh, in the autumn of 81 I think I might not be quite right about that but um, and I've, I've held that role ever since partly because um, uh, if nobody else wants it well there is that but, but, well also it's changed over time as well but also I do have this propensity to keep doing things until somebody tells me to stop so uh, uh, I am still there. Uh, however, there are more people doing more of the secretarial roles now. There's a membership officer, uh, there's a performance officer, there's an education officer. Um, a lot of that um, uh, was originally a sort of secretarial duty, which um, uh, I'm beginning to feel like a minutes secretary now, that's all, really, to be honest. And also, and, and I, uh, because I've been around a long time, I think I offer something of experience to the uh, chairs and so on. So, so, so does, does that role then en en encompass the provision of umpires for all the leagues in Derbyshire? No, that's separate. Um, I am the appointments officer of the Derbyshire ACO, um, Association of Cricket Officials, mm. and I've been doing that uh, since about 1980 really, um, but I've been the secretary, the, um, the appointment secretary of the Derbyshire County League or its predecessor, the Notts and Derby Border League, since 1984. Mm. That's another role, I don't know when to stop, mm. basically. Um, and it is the biggest league in the county. I, I have nothing to do with any other league in the county, but the county leagues absorb most of those. Okay. So, so when you say uh, uh, appointments, that, that is presumably appointing umpires to matches or to a season? Or? I appoint umpires to um, all, match all matches in the Derbyshire County League that I've got umpires to yeah. populate. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, and all matches that uh, are under the auspices of the Cricket Board or anybody else who asks me for umpires mm. as far as possible. Yeah. Uh, particularly midweek things. So how, how, how do the umpires uh, make themselves known to you? Uh, presumably they, uh, they do a course, they qualify, they then go on a list? Yes. Um, increasingly over time, what tends to have happened is um, umpires are now much, much better educated. And in that, I would like to pay tribute to 
Arthur Honeybun, who was an original trainer of umpires, to um, Alan Davis, who uh, was the education officer before Adam, and to people like Dave Connor, who is also, um, whom you'll interview in a short while, who is also um, an educator of umpires. In the old days, um, people put on a coat and just umpired because they'd played and there was no provisional, there, there was no proper training at all. I remember um, uh, in one of my first years as an umpire in the Knotts and Derby Border League, uh, sitting with a man called Harry Murgatroyd outside Stainsby Hall's uh, pavilion and he was he was most interested in the weather conditions because we had to get out there because if we get a ball bowl, John, we get us money. <laughs> <laughs> and, and basically... That, that attitude was, still exists. <laughs> <laughs> that was the size of it, really. And yeah. I, I, I said earlier on, um, sometimes games were uh, regulated by bus timetables in the days before mass car usage <laughs> when um, LBWs were given because the bus was due, and <laughs> so on. So those days are gone. I know that Tony Pope tells me, um, a, 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 a very eminent uh, cricketer within the, within the Derbyshire setup, that he believes the standard of umpiring has grown exponentially mm. at the time. And it's down to the people who do the training. Mm. Uh, and most people, the vast majority, 90 odd percent now, have definitely done a training and uh, we can, and teams can feel fairly confident that, um, that they're in good hands. Yeah. Well that's really I, I, good I'm just, just going on from that, I took up umpire initially, I'd been around cricket for many years doing all sorts of jobs, I'd done score, I'd done tea lady, I used to do commentary on local radio mm -hmm. and on hospital radio which is, did you? Oh, yes, a long while before we had Summer Saturday, yeah. I did that. That would have been in the mid to late 80s. Right. I used to do that on local matches on a Saturday. But then I turned up at a friendly one day in which my husband was, was playing, and I must admit it wasn't him that said it, but they hadn't got an umpire, so I said, oh, I'll do it. And somebody said, don't be stupid, you're a woman. Mm -hmm which was red rag to a bull. Um, <laughs> so I promptly came back, rang John and said, is there such a thing as an umpire's course? I need to do an umpire's course and we'll show these boys what to do. Um, and I came back and did the course first before I did anything else. I'd watched cricket, I'd been there, done that, did it, but I'd never actually been in the middle. I was a trained PE teacher, used to having a whistle, mm. used to being in the middle. So that bit of it wasn't a problem. But I must admit, the education I got and I came under Arthur Honeybourne you did. Um, in those days. It was very good, it was excellent. We used to come down here on a Monday night, two hours, mm -hmm. and go through various laws and so forth and so on. Um, and then they persuaded me to take the exam. And how, how, did, you, how did you get on then, having, having qualified? Is well, once, once I'd done that, John had got my name and that was it. He wasn't going to let me go. <laughs> and, and as an appointments officer, um, I think, when you're doing matches early on, John's very good in where he sends you. He won't send you to somewhere that's going to have, con or where he thinks there might be contentious issues <coughs> if you are a learner umpire. You know, if you're in your infancy, he'll send you to a match where he thinks it will be an amicable um, game, played, played in the right spirit. And were, were there ever any issues as you coming along as an umpire as a woman? There have been some very strange looks and very strange comments from players and from fellow officials. John Hampshire, all right, um, I, I did a Derbyshire three-day game down here. All he knew was that his, his colleague was going to be A. Owen. He didn't realise it was a Mrs. A. Owen. <laughs> and when I introduced myself on that first morning, he was looking over my shoulder to see who was winding him up. You know, and then he sort of realised that I'm not being wound up, I've got a woman. Oh dear, what do I do now? We got on and, and we became quite good friends. Um, so, so that was that. It's very strange. And doing county seconds matches, 
down here, you know, you'd be standing at square leg and, and people from the opposition would say, how long have you been umpiring? And I'd look at them and say, how old are you? And they'd say, oh, I'm 17, I'm 18. I said, oh, I said, longer than you've been alive. And they look at me gone out as if to say, God, I've never seen this before, you know. And, and, and so you do get some surprises. Um, he gets surprises from the players who think, you know, they come along and when you want to talk to them on the field of play, because they're doing something you don't like. I had one one professional player turn, turn to me and say, what are you going to do? Take your trousers down and smack my bottom like an orchard schoolboy. I thought, no, Derek, I'm not, but I do want to have a word with you. Um, and you put your point and eventually I got an apology from him. Uh, and that's, you know, so it goes, you've got to, I won't say you've got to have thick skin, but you've got to know where you stand and know that you're right. Yeah. Mm. That, that's an interesting one. Um, as appointments officer, I always had to be aware, both for uh, very young umpires, and we did have one who was, who, who was mm. actually 14 right. uh, when he started, uh, and also in our next case, um, it, um, there were definitely prejudicial, yeah. prejudicial reports made about um, the quality of umpiring, which I did not take very seriously in the days when I was <coughs> responsible for marks and things like that. And um, um, I'm very glad that in, uh, in, in both these cases, actually, um, uh, because both became really mm. fine umpires. Mm. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I mean, really, really good umpires we're good. talking about. Good. Yeah. Let, it let, would let, have been let, difficult to yeah, prejudice yeah. them. Yeah, thanks for that. Right. Let, let me bring uh, Adam in. So, mm. Adam, you're, dare I say it, at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, <laughs> in terms of presumably your experience here, but um, how did you get into umpiring? I uh, played for Muggington Cricket Club uh, in midweek games and found that I enjoyed just standing while we were batting because we didn't have appointed umpires. played for Duffield on Sundays as well. But uh, as soon as I got, I was brought up on football and, and rugby, so I was never brought up on cricket. I would, I would have probably been a very good player because I'm very competitive in nature and I would have wanted to be right up there, but I only got into cricket at the age of 17-ish. I started umpiring at 19, uh, I'm 30 now, so, uh, so uh, yeah, with 11 years experience, it's, uh, um, I, I like to think I'm among equals in my, uh, uh, in my panel. Um, but uh, like, like with the net, it's a, it's a struggle because in cricket there are, it's, it's, it's you know, 90% perception and 10% ability. Uh, and if, if, if the perception of you is you know, not a usual umpire, then unfortunately you're onto, you're onto a loser. And how did you get on at the beginning then, coming into it as, as um, a, 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 a I, I think I was a very defensive-minded umpire and sort of shut myself away and just... You know, I, I like to think I was a very good decision making, a, a, a very good decision maker. But uh, the the rapport building and the uh, the game management side, I, I was I was very much in my shell for for my first well for, for first many years, um, just because I, don't know, I, I wanted to. I don't, I don't know actually. Maybe it was just uh, some sort of inferiority complex, maybe. Mm. But uh, it's it's. I suppose that's natural. And just a, a slightly broader question, generally. Um, in, in all your experience of umpiring in leagues, um, has the attitude of players changed at all in that period of time? Uh, the, the attitude, well, as in the conduct of players? Yes, conduct particularly. Um, positive. Uh, I think the issue of conduct sometimes depends on um, who the umpires are. Yeah. Um, Rumour has it that uh, player behaviour is worse than it was. And I think that is certainly true. But not in our league, but, not in Derbyshire. But, but not so much in Derbyshire. Um, we do get some reasonably outrageous uh, um, episodes of di uh, dissent that uh, need to be dealt with. But I think if the umpires 
have the respect, the man management, the uh, a, a sort of air about them that Brooks, um, we're not going to be messed about here. I think that's, can I just yeah, put in please, there, yeah, several players have said we're not going to mess with Annette, it's worse than being told off by your mother in public. <laughs> and, and that's, that, in a way, I think that's quite nice that they, they know they won't get away with anything and they don't want to be seen being squealed at by a woman out there in the middle. Um, what one lot tried it, miss it never again. Uh, and that's it. So you've got to build up a reputation for yourself. You've not necessarily got to be over the top and bombastic. You've got to be natural, but you've got to be honest. Mm. Yeah. You've got to be honest. And if you've made a mistake, at some point in time, you've got to say, sorry, I got that one wrong, lads. Mm. Yeah, and go from there. Or girls, sorry. I must admit, I've done mainly events, but I've actually done the ladies' cricket as well. So and and I, gather, I gather that in other leagues, though, that there, there has been a, a lot more uh, ill discipline and violence and threat, th threats of violence. Yeah. Uh, the MCC have reacted with that with their new laws, and now we have the power to send people off mm -hmm. if need be. Sure. So, so it must it must have deteriorated yeah. nationwide. And, and and just really to sort of wind up this uh, discussion, um, w w would you say, as a result of, of that, then that uh, league cricket is in a healthy state? Looking at it from an umpire's point of view, we don't have enough umpires. That's the problem. Right. Yeah, we don't have enough umpires, but league cricket is in quite a healthy state as long as the game is in a healthy state in relation to um, the number of clubs or the number of teams that are. Uh, there, there's a decline in some of the smaller clubs are going under. Only this last fortnight, Cromford Meadows' second team disappeared from the league. Mm -hmm. That's just another statistic. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something every year. Alastair first team mm -hmm. disappeared. Little Eaton. And Little Eaton. And but, that, but, but then bigger clubs have developed fourth and fifth teams, haven't they, at the yes. same time? Yeah. Which is a bone of real contention. Some mergers have <laughs> taken place as well. Yes, yeah. mergers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, thank you very much indeed for uh, no, that discussion. You. That's been uh, yeah, very illuminating. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah, thank you.